today's letter is Sheen. And this is one Hebrew letter you can really sink your teeth into. We find the letter Sheen in some of the most peaceful words in the Hebrew language, like Shabbat and Shalom, and also in some of the most destructive words in Hebrew, like the words for desolation and ruin. It's written that our God is able to save, Yasha, and to destroy, Shamad. It is this full spectrum of Father's power that we hope to cover in today's episode. So buckle up, we're going to start off with the more bitey side of Sheen. <laughs> In the original Hebrew alphabet, the letter Sheen was a picture of teeth. And one common meaning of the letter sheen in Hebrew words is to destroy, which makes sense if you think about what father designed teeth to do. They crush, they grind things down, they tear, and they tend to destroy whatever tasty thing you put in front of them. These are just a few examples of Hebrew words where the letter sheen is used to represent destructive power. We find this one particular word, shahat, a few times in the Passover story in Exodus. When father struck Egypt with the plague of the firstborn, he passed over the Israelites, who had put the blood of a lamb onto their doors, as he had instructed. So the plague did not shahat them, it didn't destroy them, because father didn't allow the ma shahit, the destroyer, to enter into their houses. For father's children, he gives us mercy, salvation, and his mighty protection. But for the enemies who try to consume his children, it's written that the day of the Lord is as the Shad of El Shaddai. That is, it's as the destruction of the Almighty. Father's teeth, after all, are much bigger and much bitier than the teeth of the enemy. video. I, I feel like I got bit, scratched, <laughs> fed to the lights. I go, here it goes, Christians against Christians versus lions in the in the arena. Guess guess who uh, wins and gets delivered in this. Yeah, thing. when a lion roars he shog. Yeah. So it shows his teeth, I guess. So let's get into the the scene. We're really close to top. Yes, we're close to close the, to the end of the Paleo Hebrew alphabet. Yeah, Father's and, uh, alphabet. and um, uh, many around the world are uh, have, have uh, been uh, really learning, I guess, right? Yeah. And uh, we remind you again: we we uh, don't ask for offerings. Neither do we have a method of accepting them. Uh, everything we do is given to us from Father, so. We cannot charge for that. Yeah. Now, as as lost tribes, uh, he's putting everyone back together, bit by bit, bone by bone, by muscle by mu little by muscle here, a little, then the tendons, then then the flesh, you know, and uh, and then he puts life into us. So little by little, you learn you're from the ten tribes. Now, it has to come to pass. It it. He says he gathers them at the end of days. There are mighty people, each tribe, all the lost tribes of Israel, all of Jacob, and they march in through their own gate. Judah, who has never been lost, will march through their gate, yeah. and Zebulun will march through their gate. So, 
we want to hear the full word of uh, a father. And that's that's the word uh, to hear, shama. Now, shama is a is a sheen and a mim. Now, again, it helps to know Hebrew because the same word shama, which means hear, is also the same word for shem. The same two letters. Yeah. So the the root for shama for shama is shem, which is. is the, the name of Noah's son and also name, the word name. So, isn't that, isn't that amazing? So, you need to know your Bible. Read what's before and read what's, what's after because you got the same two uh, Sha and a Ma here for the for Shama and for Shem. Yeah, well, Shama's got the, the I in at the end, which is um, pay attention. Pay attention. <laughs> yeah. Listen now and so forth. Another one we can look at is the Strong's the H7843, Shahat. He goes, I will Shahat them. That's, a, that's the teeth, the, 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 wall. The, the wall, and the top. It's like a bit stopped and poof, marked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a strong one there. If we go to Genesis 6, 7, uh, it goes, And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Now, there's a word destroy. We just read uh, uh, Shahat. Shahat um, is destroy. It's one but, word for destroy. But there's different types of destruction. True. Now, this destroy is mak makah. Makah. Now, makah is not just destroy, but to wipe away, to blot out. Like uh, if Father would have done a makah, we wouldn't be here. But praise the Lord and uh, praise uh, Yeshua for... Uh, for us being here today. Yes. Amen. Noah found grace in the uh, in the iron of Father of the Lord. So instead of that, we'll go down. Uh, we'll go down. He says, and and God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will. What's that word here? Shahat. Shahat. Now notice this is also the word destroyed. With shahat, I will destroy, but I'll let some pass. But with makah, nah, ah, ah. <laughs> so we actually we saw that with the the story of the of the Passover when he shahats uh, Egypt with the plague of the firstborn. So and, some and they, of the, them still live, but they live still live, it. and and it goes on. Yeah. You know, and. Uh, and his prophecy could be fulfilled that uh, one day there'll be a road from uh, yes from Egypt, Egypt yes Egypt through the land of the ten people. tribes yeah. up to Assyria. You know, Assyrians are cousins. Uh, Assyrians are are Shem Shemites. Shemites. Israelis or Judah, Shemites. Jordanian, Shemites. Shemites. Saudi Arabian, Shemites. The, those were called Ha the Hashemite kingdoms. Nice. The Shemite kingdoms. So uh, Shem is doing just great nowadays. So look at the difference. One is, I will makah, and that's the end. No more. Blot out. Makah is destroyed with a, not just destroy, but wipe out, blot out. Gone. Versus, uh, praise, uh, praise Father, he found, uh, he, he found Noah. He was righteous. And here we are, because of Noah. <laughs> and uh, in Malachi, he says, uh, I will send uh, Elijah to change the hearts to the fathers, the fathers unto the sons. And he goes, least I uh, strike the earth with a maki, which is 
most likely makah, because it's the same thing. If I strike the earth with a maki, it's that's it. No recovery from that one. It's also blood out and wipe out and utterly destroy. Yeah. So he sent John the Baptist, and uh, and he uh, his work uh, enabled us to pass through, and here we are. So praise the Lord for for brother brother John. Yes. You know, brother John did did the work right. Amen. Yeah. I say brother John because he's living. He's among the living, not among the dead. Yes. If you are among the living, it's because Father has placed your name, your Shem, into his book of life. By the letters, the word Shem means to eat and to drink. Eating and drinking is what gives your body sustenance and life and what preserves you. To have a Shem in Father's eyes is to be alive. Yeshua has us eat and drink of him as a reminder that it's not bread and water that gives us life, but that our lives were purchased by his flesh and blood. He is our true food and drink. Earlier, we saw the word shama, which comes from this root word shem. For those who are his, when Father speaks, we shama, because our food and drink is to pay attention to his voice. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. This is he of whom I have said, After me cometh the man which is preferred before me. A lot of people disagree on how to spell Yeshua's name, and also on how it should be pronounced. But one thing that we can all agree on is that the root word for his name is to save, Yasha. In Hebrew, it's spelled Yod, Shin, Ayin, Yasha, to save. Father sent his own powerful arm to save us, and it was through Yeshua that he made his power known to us. Yasha, to save. So you mentioned John the Baptist earlier and how he was sent to restore things so that um, Father didn't maki the, Amen. the earth. Um, so the, the prophecy was that the Redeemer would come to those in Jacob who would shub, shub, from their pesha, transgression. Yeah, shub is re, is turn from, return, yeah, to, repent, to turn shub away. Is, the yeah. literal meaning of of shub by the letters is to to face the house. So um, one of the one of the the meanings of the letter sheen is it just means front or to face because your teeth are right in front of your face. So we see that in a lot of words as well. So he's saying to Shub to turn from your Pesha. And I, I personally have heard a lot of people ask over the years, you know, what's the difference between a sin and, and iniquity and transgression? This is a good time, to, so, good time to do it. Yeah, if you look at these words in, in Paleo... I got I'm feeling a pop quiz is coming. No, no, no. It's not a. It's <laughs> oh, not. No? It's okay. not a pop quiz. Not at all. I'm ready. No. Okay. So if you, <laughs> if you look at these words in paleo, you'll get a pretty good idea of of the distinction between the three. So the the sin, is, sometimes it's pronounced hate, sometimes um, chata. So it's, the picture of the wall. It's basically it makes the sound of the letter hate the wall. 
um, iniquity is avon. Avon. Some people pronounce it avon. Avon, yeah. But it's avon. Avon. And it's, it's interesting that in the Bible it mentions such a thing as an unintentional sin. Not all sin is unintentional, but there is such a thing as unintentional sin. But I don't think you're going to find any unintentional avon or pesha, because as you can see by the letters, your eyes are wide open when you are committing one of those two things. Look at that. Now, the word pesha for transgression mm -hmm. is literally a picture of the edge of your teeth. So you're tearing something with the edge of your teeth, and you're doing it with full knowledge. You're doing so, it with your eyes wide open. So the letter pay edge. very often is used to mean edge. The sheen, sheen teeth. teeth. So iron. The, if you use the edge of your teeth, is typically to tear something. Um, and then the iron. You're, doing, you're doing it, it wide with, open. with your eyes wide open. So there's even a, a scripture um, that talks about pesha is the thing that the angel of the Lord like in the howling, he does not forgive. He doesn't pardon this. The Pesha, those who will not repent. Yeah. So the prophecy in the Old Testament is that the Redeemer would only come to those in Jacob who would repent, who would shub from their Pesha. There so, we go. So then you have John the Baptist before Yeshua comes, and he's out there in the wilderness, and he's saying, shub, shub. Shub. <laughs> shub. Shub from, yeah. your, from your Pesha. Yeah. At least... At least he strikes the Eretz with a <laughs> Mac, yeah. Maka. Yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah, it, it's it's like you're opening also for for biting with uh, your eyes wide open, like you're asking for it. Thankfully, for those who are his, it's written that our Father has Macha, our Pesha. That is, he has blotted out, wiped out and utterly destroyed any memory of our transgressions. Thank you, Father, for that destructive power. That's it for our study on the Hebrew letter Sheen. Next time around, we'll take a look at the last letter in Father's alphabet, the letter Tav. See you guys. Oh, my Father, Remember your mercies on the sons, those you love with forgiveness and your counsel. They will come, they Just